There aren't any clips of Doolittle, um, well, which is... Well, hang on a second. There weren't any clips for Parasite for a very well, that's reason, because, because yes. it's in Korea. Although we, although we did have much Korean from uh, Bong's that's interview. Right. To, but surely there can't be a reason for not having uh, any clips of Doolittle. Well, this is the new Doolittle movie based primarily, apparently, on the voyages of Dr. Doolittle, so from a book which is, you know, very old. Um, is it Hugh Lofting, the, the, the Doolittle original stories? I confess I never mm-hmm. read the Doolittle Me stories. Me neither. Okay. Um, uh, in fact, I think my first contact with Doolittle was the 1960s, the Rex Harrison version. Which, okay, here's a trivia question. Hit or miss, Rex Harrison version? Okay, well, I'm obviously going to say hit because it was. I enjoyed the movie and I can still remember some of the songs, but obviously you're misleading me, so I'm going to say miss. Yeah, flopped. Um, lost Money. Uh, there was a huge campaign for Oscars for it, for the songs, you know. Um, but uh, but it, it actually, it was because... It famously came out at the time that Hollywood was changing. The old Hollywood system was breaking down. You were starting to get the arrival of new movies, you know, in the mode of, you know, The Graduate and Easy Rider. So there was a whole new audience that was starting to look for new youth-orientated pictures, and Doolittle was kind of one of the old dinosaurs. Since then, there's been animated TV series, several stage adaptations, both musical and straight. A new series of movies starting in 1998, the first two starring Eddie Murphy. Another director video animation featuring, amongst others, the voice of Tim Curry. Now, we have what we didn't know we wanted, Robert Downey Jr. as Doolittle a recluse since his mm. beloved wife sailed off on an adventure to go and find something, never came back. He is called to the bedside of the young queen who is gravely ill. And to save her, he must go on a voyage to find the magical fruit of a magical tree on an island, the island for which his lost beloved was searching. Cast includes Antonio Banderas as Rasuli, the pirate king and Doolittle's father-in-law, Michael Sheen Good as cast. Sir Blair Mudfly, sinister creep who's sent to follow Doolittle and kind of make sure he doesn't succeed. Mm. Emma Thompson as the voice from McCaw, Rami Malek as a fearful gorilla, Tom wow. Holland as Dog Jip, John Cena as Polar Bear, Kamal Nanjiani as an ostrich, Marianne Cotillard as a fox. Anybody who is anybody is in the film. Cost $175 million looks set to post a significant loss. Incidentally, just like the Harrison version, which you said yourself, your main memory was that you'd seen it and liked it yeah. and that you were a fan of the songs. Um, worth noting, incidentally, the, both the Eddie Murphy movies made money and actually the first one was fairly well critically received. So this is directed by Stephen Gagan. I had to check this, okay, because Stephen Gagan has had a very kind of odd and interesting career. Um, he was a writer who is best known for doing stuff that is kind of, kind of much grittier. I think I first came across his name through Rules of Engagement, the William Friedkin film in which he had a, a screenplay credit. So as a director, Siriana, uh, Gold and now Doolittle, um, as a writer, a kind of extraordinary uh, writer's career, which goes back to Siriana, uh, Havoc, before that, Traffic, and then you know Rules of Engagement. So it does seem like a kind of a, a weird choice. The story behind this is it was shot in 2018 and the first version of the film that they got, they test screened, people thought it wasn't funny enough. So they roped in loads of different people, different writers, different kind of, you know, producers, directors to make it funnier and better. And they did 21 days of reshoots in 2019 after poor test screenings. So this is the funnier version. And all I can say is Heaven only knows what the unfunnier version must have been like before they did 21 days of screenings. Comedy highlights include Robert Downey Jr. pulling a suit of armour out of a magical creature's backside amidst much flatulence, reptile flatulence, as it turns out. The weirdest thing about the film is this. Um, You know that thing about bait, that it's all post-synced? I don't believe I'm just about to compare bait to Doolittle. That they they filmed it silent, okay, and then afterwards everyone dubbed their voices. Yeah. Okay? Well, in the case of Doolittle, it looked to me as if every single one of Robert Downey Jr.'s lines had been dubbed, which implies that either the first time he did it, he didn't do it in a Welsh accent, or the first time he did it, he did it in a Welsh accent that was so terrible that they had to redub it into the terrible Welsh accent that he's now doing it in. Not only is Robert Downey Jr.'s Welsh accent so bad that it would make you want to stand up and applaud Russell Crowe at the end of Robin Hood and suggest that the University of Cambridge give him an honorary professorship in the Department of Linguistics. But his accent is made worse by the fact that many of the scenes in which he's doing the terrible Welsh accent, he is on screen with Michael Sheen, Ah. who is doing the perfect cut-glass British accent because Michael Sheen can do accents. He can. Apparently, Robert Downey cannot. Now, incidentally, 
I did then have to check whether what Robert Downey was doing was indeed a Welsh accent because I don't wasn't sure where this came from. So I found an interview with him in which he said the following. It's the same thing I did with Iron Man. All right, there's something here. That's before I signed on. I just went Googling weirdest Welsh doctor. I just wanted to think of, I don't want to do another English accent. So there was this guy called William Price, who's a nutty Welsh doctor. I'm quoting. He's a neo-Druidist. He believed he could communicate with all nature and all that stuff. So I sent a picture of this wild looking guy wearing this kind of suit with stars on it and like a staff in his hand. I sent that to Gagan and he goes, this looks good to me. And I was like, great, let's do this movie. The tagline for the Harrison version was, um, you know, was it like you've never seen anything like it in your life? Because that was the song, wasn't it? You've never seen anything like it. And in this case, the tagline should have been, you've never heard anything like it in your life. It is. So at the centre of it, the worst accent. And I would play you a clip of it, but we haven't got one. any, okay. But it goes like this. Hello, I am Dr. Doolittle, boy. And I have been wandering through the life. And you're going, what, what, where, what is... Is, he's from Mars. What? A little bit of Willem Dafoe. Yes, in and there. every now and then, oh, the did, it just yeah. <clears throat> okay, Willem Dafoe in the Lighthouse, right, is on the straight and narrow when it comes to accents. You can literally, with you put a line in the sand with the staff and go over here, Willem Dafoe. Everyone from every Guy Ritchie movie ever, um, your man from the Ocean's Eleven films who does the Cockney accent, all over on this side because over here is Robert Downey doing Dr. Doolittle. Beyond that, the central performance is terrible, but it's so terrible that it kind of distracts you from all the other things that are terrible. The terrible script, the terrible visuals, the dull plot, the dismal gags, the fact that at 101 minutes, it really, really tested the patients. It is shockingly poor. And that's the same in any language.